In this video, we are going to look at content representations. When you build a website, you normally build HTML and then that HTML gets sent to the browser and it displays your articles, your products, etc. But sometimes you want to present your content in different formats, for example, as JSON or as um, an RSS feed, for example. And content representations are the perfect tool for that. I've already installed the plain kit because we don't really need anything fancy for this. Um, and let me go straight to it. So I'm going to start with a new page, just as a demo page. We call it demo for the sake of this. And we add a demo.txt, nice and simple, and a bit of a title. And as a next step, we will create a template for that. We have learned that in the other videos so far, so I'm not going to talk too much about templating. Um, so now there's a demo template for our demo page and we can do whatever we want in here. Maybe let's start with an H1. As soon as we open that, we have our H1 here, nice and simple. So let's say this would be a beautiful page. We are very happy with it. It presents something, it presents a project, it presents our um, company details or whatever. And now we want to display that in a different format. And to keep it simple again, we are starting with a, a simple plain text. The idea now is that we kind of need a different template for that. We want to present that uh, plain text somehow. And we can do that by creating just another template for the same page. And this works by creating a new file. And we call it demo again, but we can't call it .php because that would be a duplicate. So what we can do now is we can choose the file extension for the content type that we want to represent. In this in this case, I want to create text. So I add .txt here, and then I continue with .php to make sure it's still a PHP template. So now Kirby still loads that .txt.php template whenever it gets to that page and to that content representation. I'm get, getting there in a second. And now I can create another template for the same page and add some plain text in here. But how do we open that? Because our demo page is still here. How do we get to that content representation? It's pretty simple. Um, we just add .txt up here as well. So no, now Kirby has a look at that file extension there and it will um, then see if there is a template for that file type for that content representation and it will load our new .txt.php template and it will present the plain text that is in that template. You can see Kirby already picked the right content type, so it already knows this is plain text and it sends a text slash plain um, content type header to the browser, so everything's fine and it's being displayed as plain text. So this is pretty cool. And while this is now plain text in the browser, it is still a regular Kirby template. We can still do all the things that we would normally do in a template, just like printing the title, for example and that will still result in plain text. To give you a better idea how you can use this, other than just building a text file, um, we are going to head over to the starter kit. The starter kit comes with some notes. It's basically a blog and it also has a photography page and we are going to build content representations for both of those pages. So I want to build an RSS feed for those notes or Actually, I already have built it and I want to show you how I did that. This is the starter kit, the, the structure of the starter kit, and it comes with a notes.php template and this is how it looks like. If this doesn't look familiar to you at this point, you should check out the other videos in the basic series. It's doing the same things here. It's coming with a tag filter. Um, it's using a controller to get the notes, to get all those articles for the blog. Um, and you can also, if you don't feel familiar with this kind of uh, mm, templates structure, you can read through the documentation here. The starter kit is fully documented to give you a better entrance into building stuff with Kirby. 
the controller part is maybe the most important one. Um, if you haven't worked with controllers yet, controllers are a super great way to clean up your templates um, and prepare all kind of data that you need in your templates and then send it to the template itself. So this is where the nodes variable comes from. There is a nodes controller um, that does that. It does the tech, tech filtering and it also sends the paginated nodes to the template. And this is where this comes from. Otherwise, this nodes variable wouldn't be there. This is maybe important because we will see it in a second as well. So what I did now is I created a second template and you can see it here. It's called nodes.xml.php and it will then have our code for the RSS feed. If I open that up, I already added the, the syntax for the RSS feed um, because I always have to look that up. It's actually not that super difficult. It's, um, it's just XML, which looks a lot like HTML. Um, so you can instantly read it if you have never worked with RSS feeds um, before. So there is an RSS element, which is our main element. And then that one has a channel and the channel has a title, a description, a link to our site and then an atom link to back to the feed. This uses the page URL method to link back to the feed. And I just attached the .xml text ex uh, file extension afterwards. And then it goes through the same collection of nodes that we just saw in the notes.php template. And for every node, it prints the title, it prints the date, and it formats the date for the RSS feed with the R method. Um, with the R format string is probably the better word here. And it also adds the note URL as a link and it does the same for the global UID. So permalinks or those URLs can easily used as uh, IDs for each item. And that's pretty much it. So this is already the RSS feed um, that validates if you put it into a validator and you can subscribe to that if you uh, if you like that kind of stuff. And if we open it here with .xml, you can see it doesn't look fancy because RSS feeds out of the box just look like un, um, unstyled XML, but it works. It, it has um, our items, it has our channel element, and it has the title, etc. So this is a perfectly fine XML feed that you can now throw into um, Net Newswire or your favorite uh, RSS reader. It's pretty simple to build and it's great because you can extend it yourself. You could now add a little description tag here, uh, text here. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite easy. One important part that you might um, want to know is that I use the XML field method here to make sure that the title is always encoded correctly. But other than that, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The second example that I want to show you is um, a little API that I built for the photography page. And we can open that up with .json. So I just pretended that we need those um, albums in a JSON format for, let's say, a kiosk application for some exhibition or maybe for a mobile application or just because we want to um, yeah, provide it as a simple little API endpoint. Maybe also for a static site generator, I don't know. Just whatever you come up with. And again, this is really, really easy to build. Going back to the template folder, there is a new template called photography.json.php. And in there, all I'm doing is I'm going through um, those al albums, which is just page children, and I'm going for the listed ones to ignore all the unlisted ones or all the drafts. And for every album, I am pushing the data that I need in the JSON object to that album's array. So I want the title, the tags, URL, and the cover image. And I can do that in the same way that I would do it in a template by using the different methods for the album page. There is one thing that is important though, um, the title and also the tags, they are fields in our um, album text files. So if I go to the albums here, there's trees, for example, and there's the album 
.txt. You can see those are fields. There, there's a title field. There is a text field down there. I'm accessing fields here. And fields in Kirby are objects. So it's not just a simple string, a simple title string and a simple text string here. They are objects and those objects um, have a value. If we don't do that and I remove this and I go back, you can see it will now print the value as or it will print a title um, object with the value as, as one of the fields. So we can resolve this by going directly to the value and then it's all fine. This would be one way to do it. We, can, we could also string cast this, which is a bit more ugly, but this would work as well, just to make sure that this won't end up as an object in your nice JSON. The URL itself isn't um, returning an object. This is just a string. And for the image URL, it's the same thing. So if there is an image in the, um, in the album, it will print the URL. This could break if the album does not have an image. Um, so if you want to make sure that this does not happen, we can make this optional. Um, this is now working in PHP 8, which is great. So this is giving us a really simple way to make sure the URL is only included if there is actually an image. The stuff down here, you don't really need it. I did it for this demo to make it pretty. Um, if we remove it, it will just be a single line of nasty, unreadable JSON. So those um, constants here are pretty useful if you want to pretty print the JSON, but that is not necessary. For, for an endpoint that could be read by um, a JavaScript library or any kind of remote library that fetches data, you wouldn't need it. It could read it without problems. So as you can see, content representations in this case are a very powerful way to build your own little um, API endpoints. And you can customize them to ex exactly the kind of format that you need. You could include all kinds of sub um, data here for different categories, or I don't know, whatever you want to put into those JSON objects, you could just do it. it those are just templates, Kirby templates. Um, Content representations do so much more than just that. If you want to have a really, really cool example, you can check out our website. And on our website in the cookbook, you can find this article here by Michael, uh, sorry, I have to look up the name, Emanuel Steinberg, I'm sorry. Um, so what he did is he used content representations to build social um, graph images, which is super cool. Open graph images, I'm sorry. So what he does is he uses the GD library, um, which is an image creation library in PHP to turn pages into images, image representations. So this is how it looks first. And then he does a bit of styling and then it comes out like this. And we do a very sim similar thing for our Kirby website to create social graph images for every page on our website. And it's super, super useful. And the idea to use content representations for this is awesome. So as soon as you start um, attaching .png to your URL, it will result then in a really nice um, image that you can link to in your metadata. There are many more ways that you can use this. Um, I really highly recommend that you look more into it, just play around with it, get a better feel of it, and then I'm super excited to see what you build with it. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.